I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and I'm at my father-in-law's building and I'm putting together a new machine I kind of bought to use here until I need it at my house because uh, as most of you know we lost my father-in-law a couple months ago and with winter coming on I got to have something to get this driveway cleaned out and I'm not going to transport mine back and forth. So I bought a new snowblower. As far as I could tell, it's the best one I could find. Uh, I did a lot of research on um, online. I clean my glasses a little bit here. And I asked a lot of questions at the dealerships about these different machines. Um, I really think I'm going to like it. But there's only one thing I do not like about it and there's nothing I can do. So let's tip it down and open this thing up. Get the camera moved here. Now I did remove all the staples from the bottom of the box. So I should be able to just lift this thing up. side supports which are just some really crappy one by twos or fours and they have them around here to support the wooden structure in the box and I don't know how much weight this is going to hold but it says on the box do not stack more than six high. Well, these things, the machine itself is 270 pounds. Then you got the packaging. So I'm glad that this machine wasn't in the bottom of the pile. This is a Cub Cadet. It is 30 inches wide. It's the new 2X Max. And uh, I guess we'll put it together and see how it runs. The first thing we're going to need and it looks like I gotta go get one. Okay, you gotta have a pair of side cutters to cut all these zip ties. And there's a bunch of them. Eventually, I'll come across the hardware package. We got the bolts for the handles up here, and they're self locking. So you can't get the nuts off without a wrench. Now this 
building is the exact same size mine is, with the exception that he put a wall up behind me and walled off 16 feet of the other room, which is insulated and has a floor hoist in it, because he was uh, always working on cars. Now let's see if we got all the zip ties cut. Yeah, it looks like it. I just gotta lift this thing and get the handlebars up. Some long bolts in there to tighten up. Okay, I finally got them bolts tightened up in the handlebars. I had to go get a different socket. Um, we got these tied down. We get this thing put together, I'll uh, tell you what kind of options it has. this off. It's bubble wrap, but it's sticky on one side, and they stuck it to itself. I guess I ain't going to get that apart.
tight fitting holes, I guess you gotta screw the bolts in. second hole so you got a little clearance. Let's drill a quarter inch hole for a quarter inch bolt. I guess that way it won't vibrate around as much. duct tape when you use that stuff. Now we'll put the crank in. That's down here. And there's a cut there's a hairpin in there. two holes, I'm not sure which hole it's supposed to be in. I guess that one works pretty good. That's all there is to putting it together. I think the hardest part would be get, <laughs> getting it off this skid. shovel. Now the only thing left we got to do is hook up the shift cable or rod I guess I should say. Now, if I 
Ken, I'll try to get you a little closer. I'll have to tip the camera down more. And let's see, let's go over here. Some of the things I like and don't like about this. This, the crank for the chute is a flexible, I don't know if there's a cable inside of there or if it's just a heavy piece of rubber. And I'm not too excited about that. But it works nice. And I haven't seen any complaints online about it. To tip the, the uh, deflector down, that's done with a cable also. Typically, I leave it up so I can throw the snow as far as I can. Now, the only thing I don't like about this, in, this machine is the engine is made in China. And all of them are. You can't buy one that's not made in China. Every snowblower on the market has that engine on it. And a story I heard behind that is a dealer was selling snowblowers. And there, four or five years ago, they were kind of like the riding lawnmowers. I went into Sears once and looked at all their tractors. I opened all the hoods. All these tractors were identical. One had a, a Briggs & Stratton engine. One had a Tecumseh engine. One had a Honda engine. One had a Yamaha engine. And there was a couple other ones I don't even remember. But what started this problem is a dealer was selling his snowblower and it had a, I believe they said a Kohler engine on it. Well, the snowblower had issues within the warranty period. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> the problem was the engine. He was not a Kohler dealer, so he couldn't buy parts to fix it. And it just kind of snowballed. All the dealers were having the same issues with different engines that they couldn't get parts for. So they all apparently got together and said, you're going to put the same engine on every snowblower. So if this broke down and I took it to my, the people I deal with, which is Ace Hardware, they don't sell these, but they can get parts for the engine. And they can get parts for the machine but it's got a three-year warranty on it and it's got five-year warranty on the gearbox. And because of the Chinese engine, uh, I bought this at Home Depot. They're all the same price everywhere. I am going to buy the extended warranty through Home Depot for an extended three years, which will give me six years on the machine for 200 bucks. I figure with that engine, I'm gonna get the warranty. Now I've got, I first bought a Aaron's because I have an Aaron's snowblower at my house. I've had for 35 years, probably 30 years. I bought it in a basket because the guy, the kid was gonna fix it himself and got way over his head. And I, I went down to my Lowe's was selling errands, so I bought one. Now Lowe's and Home Depot, you've got 30 days and you can take this back. Full refund, no questions asked. If it didn't have a gas engine on it, anything else in the building, 90 days at Home Depot. So I bought this thing at Lowe's, thank God, because if you get it from the dealership, they don't take them back. You're out the door, it's yours. And this one that I got from Lowe's, I was rolling it across my uh, 
across the building here. I was working on it. I wanted to grease some things up. And I don't know if I even have the video now. Well, that's too bad. Oh, here it is. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Yeah, I guess you can. Yeah, not bad. Let me turn the volume up because you're definitely going to want to hear it. We'll start over. That was the Aaron snowblower. And with the history I've got with Aaron's, that's the first thing I looked at. I went right down and bought it. it. Has the same engine, by the way. But that was something in the, uh, I tipped it up and I took the pan off the transmission. I wanted to look at the parts in there. You definitely want to do that. And they were like half or less of the size of mine. The shafts were smaller, the clutch was smaller, the, the clutch on mine has an aluminum uh, assembly that slides on the hexagon shaft like a snapper does, but it was like half the size, mine's three quarters, this thing was like half inch, um, and the whole assembly was plastic, and the rod that shifts it went up between the two plastic plates with a bearing. And I, I set it up on some blocks and I spun the tires and was shifting it and it was that bearing and assembly that was getting bound up in that plastic uh, assembly. So I kind of decided right then we're gonna look around. And uh, I had looked at these before and I really liked them, but with my history with errands, I thought I would go with that. So when we get some snow, and hopefully I never use this thing, I'll let you know how it works. Now it does have lights, like my, uh, my Craftsman had lights on it. My errands did not, I put lights on it. But it's got two lights up here, which my Craftsman had but the problem with that is when, when your acorns are coming down, when you're throwing snow, it blocks the light. Well, this year, they also put a light down here where it should be. The year, last year's model did not have this light on it. So, I'll try to get it off the skip. The, uh, the last video I watched, the guy got it loaded up, put gas in it, and he drove it off the skid. <laughs> we'll see what kind of luck I have. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll kind of do a walk around. I'm trying to hold the camera. Now this model, they also for this year, put this brace from the handles down to the auger housing to help stiffen it up because it weighs so much. Let me get this box out of my way. And again, I like that headlight. That's going to be nice because uh, typically when I get home from work and start snow blowing, it is completely dark. Now these auger blades, as you'll notice, they're kind of sloppy. They make them that way. And they also make the shear pins a lot smaller in diameter and they have a larger undercut in them so they will break away quicker so you don't damage the differential in the uh, front of the machine. I've never stripped one out but I did have a guy I worked with at the shop that stripped his out and we had a hard time replacing it because his auger, he had never taken his auger off and greased it. And it was 
three times as much work just trying to get that auger off on the one side than it was to do the whole job. Now you'll notice how big that chute is, or not the chute, but the auger opening. That's a 14 inch opening where most of them only have a 10 or a 12 inch. So it, it swallows the snow a little faster. Now these are heated hand grips and you got what they call down here power steering. And what that does is there's a dog down inside. You can see the gearbox down there. There's a dog inside of there that just comes up off the gear so it quits moving. So if something breaks in the middle of your snow blowing, it will keep running and driving. All that does is kicks the gear out so you can turn a circle without the inside tire digging a hole. Both my other snow blowers are what you would call positive traction. Both tires are locked together. And when you get to the end of the driveway to make a sharp turn, the inside tire is spinning as fast as the outside tire. And it just sits there and digs a hole. These do not do that. Once you pull that little lever, yellow, yellow lever up on the side that you're turning towards. So that's about it, I guess. Like I said, in a couple of months when I start using this thing, I'll do another video on it and update you what I think of it and how well it works. And as you can see, this part of the building is not insulated. <laughs> so I did run home and, uh, and I'm just gonna leave that here. I brought my salamander heater. I've been trying to sell for the last few years and apparently nobody wants it anyway, so I'm just going to start using it. So that's it for this video and uh, the next video is going to be replacing, I hope, if I can get a camera down underneath there, the father-in-law zero turn mower. Apparently the cap that holds the oil pump is aluminum as the whole transmission is and it's warped and it's leaking oil and the other one on the other side there's two of them one for each each wheel uh, he replaced shortly after he bought it under warranty and why they just didn't say hey fix them both here's two uh, it wasn't leaking so I had to go down and get one the other day and it was 70 bucks for this cap and pump. So uh, I'm gonna try to get to that today and make a video on that. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and for you guys down south, you probably don't even know what one of these is. And we'll talk to you soon. So long. Hi. I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. We're going to go outside and I'm going to show you my old snow blowers and then you'll understand why I finally bought a new one. These are pretty much can't get parts for them anymore. So let's go outside and take a look. Now this is an old Craftsman snow blower I bought in 1976. And the light you see on the front, I moved. It used to be up there where you can see the rusty little ring on the dashboard. And the problem with that was when the chute is aimed in the direction it is now, and you're blowing snow, it would just cast a shadow, and it made it worse than no light at all. So I moved it down here where it should have been in the first place. Now I bought this in 76, about a year or so before the big storm we got in 77, 78. We got dumped 
three and a half feet of snow overnight. For us, that was a blizzard. Everything was closed. And this thing just chewed through it with no issues. It is all chain driven. There is no belts on it. Inside of this box right here um, on the engine, there is a Comet centrifugal clutch with a number 35 chain going down to the main bar. And all the jack shafts, I guess you could call them, inside the transmission is all number 46 chains. This is what they used to call a three-stage snowblower because the bar up here at the top was called a drift breaker and you can see that is chain driven. This thing will not stop no matter what you hit. It'll either suck it up and blow it out or it'll drive over top of it. And something I want to show you this is the original Tecumseh engine. I painted it a little bit because it started rusting. Uh, I had to do some work to the carburetor cover because parts came off. Well, parts on the carburetor broke, so I had to make my own handles. And how many snowblowers have you ever seen with chrome hubcaps <laughs> them are original so they must be a good chrome plating i haven't been able to buy parts for this for probably 25 or 30 years i've had to make everything <coughs> this one's a bigger one i think that's a 28 inch no it's a 26 inch up here on the uh, dashboard seven horse engine this is a 32 inch machine that i bought from a friend of mine at church that blew the engine up and he was going to try to fix it well when you blow up an engine there's no fixing but he was in his early 20s and didn't know that so i just bought a brand new 10 horse and dropped on it and the snowblower was in three different boxes. He was going to try and fix that too. So when I bought it, uh, I just finished completely stripping it. And I cleaned it up and painted it red because uh, I don't like orange. And yes, this is an Aaron's machine. But I can't buy parts for this anymore. This is about, oh, I'm guessing 45 years old. That one is about 47 years old. And uh, it still runs. This is the one I use all the time. And yes, I have a cab on it. I think these things look so stupid. But... If you've ever used a snowblower with this cab and then used one without, you would definitely get a cab. They are really do keep you warm. <coughs> now, even with this 10 horse, my driveway gets a lot of slush. And back here on this corner, this goes out to the road. That's a turnaround back there. Right here in this area, I'll get probably two to three inches of slush and water. And when I use this big 10 horse, it will blow the slush and it lands on top of that tire. I cannot clear the slush out of here with either one of these machines. So my father-in-law said, I got a snowblower you can use. He brings over one of these things. <laughs> I just kind of chuckled. But this thing will throw that slush 15 to 20 feet. I can't, I couldn't believe it. 
So I went out and bought one the day after I got done using his. And the part of the driveway right there that will flood with probably three inches of water, it will blow the water out into that greenery on the ground. It's That thing is amazing. And I've said before, if I had to drop down to one snowblower between these three, it definitely would be that one. It, it's just amazing how well that thing works. And it's a Toro, 16 inch wide. And I can't, it's like 98 cc's. It does have electric start, usually pulls on a sec, or usually starts on the second or third pull. Amazing little machine. So that's kind of why I bought a new one. I have to use this one here on this driveway and I need one at my in-laws to clean out that driveway because we recently lost my father-in-law and there's no way my mother-in-law can do it. And I'm not going to drive this thing back and forth or trailer it in the winter. <clears throat> I did add this little light bar on here because typically when I get home from work to start snow blowing, it's dark. So I guess that's why I decided to get a new machine. And I hope you enjoyed the video of unboxing and assembling it.